Okay guys, and I was there uh, just now editing uh, the video, putting everything together, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna have to put some sort of a, a disclaimer at the start of the video, uh, because I don't want you to walk in to watch this video thinking you're gonna see something really, you know, really technical, or because the truth is, there's a, this is a 40 minutes a long video plus this in intro now uh, of me doing nothing literally of me doing nothing because obviously there is measurements there is some logic that I, I believe I was following try to resolve the problem try to find the issue try to find the cause for the problems uh, without diagrams I don't have diagrams for this car uh, I was literally just go along, try to follow wire by wire, try to understand where everything was connecting. But literally it's a 40 minutes of me doing nothing. And as you're gonna see, it looks like the problem fixed itself. <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but I fixed the car by doing nothing. Um, that said, uh, guys, and I'm gonna mention this throughout the video a few times, uh, I believe what was causing all of this was the repair we did on the first video on this car, which by this time that video has been published. Uh, but if you missed it, go in the description of this video. I'll leave a link in there so you can watch the video and you'll see what was the repair that we did on the first video that I believe, I really strongly believe that from all those wires, some wires were going to places that were causing all the other issues with the car. Um, that, possibly in conjunction with the, the uh, power uh, connection we fixed for the front fuse box, fixed, cleaned, that was not very good. I don't think I mentioned throughout the video, but uh, that nut on that power to the fuse box at the front was not even tightened properly. It was really bad. Uh, and all corroded and it was not very good. So maybe under load, uh, not just that power, but also the grounds, maybe under load, you would get power to some modules and module starts behave weirdly, I, I don't know. But the truth is the problem was fixed with me doing nothing. Uh, I don't know, it could have been, I, I don't know. I don't know guys, uh, I just know it's fixed. That's all, I, that's all it matters really. Uh, but yeah, don't walk into this video guys think you're gonna see something really technical or, you know, because it's not that. Um, but still guys, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope there's some information there that you can find useful and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna leave you the video because there's three minutes already added to the video. So I'm gonna leave with it. Uh, but yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not the best of my videos. Trust me, it's not. But I'll leave with it and still hope you enjoy it. Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. And looks like I stopped right on time. So uh, welcome to another video. So the video today, continue, continuing working on this 2008 uh, Vectra uh, VRX8. Um, it's not in Holden or whatever I said. I know, I think it's in Australia that the Vauxhall is called Holden or something like that. And I thought this was the symbol for it, but I was confused. I do apologize for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is basic, it's basically a Vectra um, chassis. And um, right, we sorted the first issue with this, uh, which everything is on the video that you probably watched already. If you haven't, a link will be in the description below. So continuing, next issue is with the engine. Now, first thing, and I've showed you quite a bit of this on the first video, but the first thing is, as you're gonna see, the engine light on these things should come up right there at the top, and you're gonna see there's no engine light. <laughs> How convenient. Right, but the second issue, let's gonna start this thing actually. Uh, but the issue for this video today, guys, is going to be for the... Ah. Okay, there it is. It's for the engine light, uh, which obviously is there. So we're going to scan the car and I'll show you what the issue is. So the car has been scanned. There's a couple issues, but as you can see here, 
uh, there's two present one is for the malfunction MI circuit indicator sorry which is basically telling as there's something wrong with the engine light uh, I don't know if that's gonna make the engine light come on because if the engine light which is a little bit silly because you cover the light and then you have that in there really what's the point you don't even think do you anyway um, but the issue we're gonna focus on here today is gonna be P0056 that one in there which is for our O2 sensor ETA circuit range performance Bantu sensor 2 so I'm gonna show you a little bit of live data obviously I've been through this already uh, even on the first video I've been a little bit but we're gonna quickly look at some live data see what's going on with our O2 sensor I think what we're gonna see is that there's nothing going on with it <laughs> so these first bits is for the actually sensor itself nothing to do with the eater when we come down okay so this is the first thing for the eater so uh, so I believe this is bank one eater two there we go sorry bank one sensor one where is the bank one sensor two bank one sensor no this is bank one sensor two sensor 2 ah damn it I know why ah! just hold a second guys okay so I probably should I probably should start this video again but I'll just explain it quickly guys I was already doing some measurements and basically I had both post cut sensors unplugged under the car that's why you will see nothing on both of the sensors uh, we're gonna do this again and I will obviously now just curiosity probably we're gonna have trouble codes for uh, bank one sensor 2 as well no no yeah no it didn't that's that's lucky that's lucky okay so um, if go there <coughs> what you're gonna see now is that okay for the eater so sensor so bank two that's going to be sensor one so bank one that's going to be sensor two bank one sensor two correct yeah so bank one sensor two i believe this is going to be the duty cycle for the eater so 59 uh, before was three if you recall uh, just a minute ago uh, that was because it was unplugged but now both sensors are plugged in and as you can see sensor two is showing three so he's not being uh, activated and then if you come here again uh, I, I'm not sure what this value is uh, I don't know if this is amps or uh, I'm not really sure what these values are are temperature I don't think it's temperature no chance it doesn't really tell you um, that doesn't matter uh, ideally you'd plug in MDI and would have a little bit more details but anyway but then you come here on this one and again it shows zero in there on this bank 2 sensor 2 and then down here on the circuit status it says incomplete so we have definitely an issue with that sensor um, or the circuit so I was already making some measurements so I know a little bit already uh, of what is not wrong but we will go through this quickly um, I don't know if I'm gonna record today because I don't have much time now uh, I need to stop soon but we'll see and, and the weather is not really helping but maybe I will be able to put the to meter there and show you a couple things um, so another thing um what else that's it really so let's kind of go quickly uh actually come out of this stop that okay so let's kind of turn this off actually see if we can make some measurements let me see yeah it's not rainy now so i will get the multimeter ready well it's just a few drops not so bad so I'll get the multimeter quickly connected and I'll show you where I'm going to connect the multimeter and I'll show you exactly what we're going to find out. Okay guys and we are now under the car and you have two sensors. You have one sensor on this side right here which is the one I came to plug in uh, and then we have another sensor on this side. So bank 2 is going to be the one on the driver side for me here in the UK for you guys with the left and drive it's going to be the one on the passenger side which basically from the front of the engine look at the engine bay 
bank 2 is going to be the bank on your left, which is this one here. And because it's sensor 2, it's going to be the sensor after the catalytic converter. So we have one sensor right there at the top, and then you have the catalytic converter, and you have sensor 2. So, the colors for the sensors are usually as following, as follows, let me see if I can show you this. So, the two white wires are usually the eater, and then the grey is usually the ground, uh, which in this case, this ground was actually fed from the ground we just repaired on the first video, believe me or not, uh, I actually checked. Uh, before I put everything back on, uh, but it doesn't really matter because that is not for the eater. The, the eater works slightly different, which I will explain in a second. But as I was saying, the silver, the grey is usually the ground, and then the black is usually the signal into the ECU. Um, and, and again, the two white wires are usually the are usually the the eater. So they are white because usually it doesn't really matter how they are plugged in. But uh, okay. Let me, I can't, let me plug this. Okay, so, uh, if you just remember, it goes like this, and as you can see, the two white wires, so this was like this. So the two white wires are the ones at the top, which is gonna be these wires here at the top, which is gonna be, it looks like a red, and blue and a brown and a brown is that what it is it doesn't really matter let me get my oh guys i'm so sorry so we're gonna probe one of these wires so the eater works as follows one of the wires are gonna be power or voltage that's going to be fed from okay so we are probing the last wire here which is it looks like a red and blue or something like that uh, so let's gonna go in front of the car now sorry about that under the car there is really tricky to work around there but as I was saying so uh, usually the it doesn't really matter how the white are connected because that's just a heater a resistance that's why they are white white but anyway we back probed one of them and one of them so the, the reason why I'm coming to this fuse box is because you have two fuses there as I said I don't have diagrams for this so you have two fuses here that shows emission one and emission two I'm gonna guess this is for the this is gonna be for for my O2s, maybe I'm wrong. So it's gonna be one of these, or that one. Oh, let me put the buzzer, and then we'll check those. There we go, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. And the fuse is good. Let me see the emissions too. Well, we have continuity here as well. Okay. Anyway, so. And then, the duty cycle for the ground, it goes from the ECU. So, the only way for us to be 100% sure now that the ECU is commanding that sensor would be, uh, well, I can, easy, I can either get to the ECU, which lives underneath here, and try to back probe something. Uh... But let me see if I can find where the other wire comes through. If it comes straight into the ECU, or if it goes through something else before it goes into the ECU. Mainly, this plug here. But we established that the power to the O2 sensor, to the heater, should be okay. Uh, fuses are good, and if one is powered, I guess the other one is going to be powered as well. And I guess I could just go and play the... the the lottery let me take these off right so the other one actually I checked now properly is a pink uh, with a blue stripe which I'm gonna guess is gonna be this one there like pink with a blue stripe and the other one I moved it is just a brown wire which comes to here so uh, if we need to back probe anything I'm just gonna double check that is this one here is the my pink I, actually let me just make sure if I want to back probe to see if the ECU is actually then um, uh, activating the 
the, the eater I can measure here rather than go under the car. Okay, so I moved the wire underneath to the pink and blue. So let me just make sure I don't forget which one is this one here. Which one is, is the one there? Okay. Actually, let me just do this and take a picture so I know which one is, which is the second one there. Okay, let me take a picture. Boom, that's it. Now let's see if we have a beep on this pink and blue. <laughs> Boom, there we go. Let's gonna do another measurement now. Okay, so I need to correct something here because I did a, a mistake where I don't know what I was thinking. When I got under the car, I was actually connecting everything to the wrong sensor. So as you can see now, I have connected to this side, to bank two, okay? But I was uh, measuring bank one. At the moment, the probe is connected to the pink and blue. So the pink and blue are shared on both sensors. And as you can see, I still have 0 0.4. So they must have a splice somewhere. And uh, that goes to both sensors, if not to four sensors. It might be that I actually shared across all the, the O2 sensors, uh, the pre-cut and the the post cut uh, but the actually signal the actually other wire that we first established that was this brown here the brown is for the bank one on that side on this side is actually a orange and white which is this one here I'm just gonna quick show you I'm gonna change the probe in there and then I'll show you okay so I have connected now the probe underneath the car to the orange and white which is right next after the pink and as you can see 0 0.4 ohms so uh, that means my circuit at least from here to the O2s are good so I'm gonna guess this B here is gonna be good as well but before that um, at least what we can do now guys as I was saying earlier is now if I want to see if the ECU is pulsing uh, these or is try to activate the O2 sensor I can measure it here without having to go under the car but there is one more test I want to do uh, and I will show you what it is in a second Okay, and very quickly, because I need to pack things up, uh, and the weather is not very good. Things are starting to not look very good, because, right, pink and blue, which is shared across both sensors. That's going to measure the resistance of the first eater, and we get 6.8 ohms. Okay, uh, that's going to measure across the other sensor, the one that is faulting, and we have... 6.9 ohms so they are both measuring the same mm. oh, oh. it's not very good now things are starting to look a little bit more more tricky now okay and three days later we are back into this uh, I had to quick watch the last couple of clips uh, just to uh, refresh myself uh, where we left and the reason why I was saying that it starts to look a little bit more tricky is because up to now we don't have nothing pointing to a actually bad O2 sensor because even the resistance for the eater looks okay um, but we're not gonna panic just yet so the first thing I'm gonna do next or I've done already it was unplug these just to make sure connections here are clean as you can see pretty clean the pins are also really really clean so I don't think it's gonna be a problem here so the bit that was left now for us to check is the running between here and the actually ECU because that comes to here and it comes into that pl uh, this is broken here by the way I don't like this very much either we might gonna have to clean this it comes into this plug so I'm gonna quickly very quickly just measure this from here to here uh, just to make sure and then we're gonna do another couple more tests okay and measuring the orange and white which I believe uh, if I recall all of this correctly is the faulty uh, eater all the way from here to my plug ECU I don't know if this is the right pin but because uh, I don't have diagrams but it definitely comes straight into one of the pins here and if I finish to check all the row on this side This is coming into two pins at the same time. Okay. 
why this is coming into two pins and I have zero ohms in one and 12 on the other one. I was not expecting to see these in two pins. Let me check the other sensor. Okay, this is strange. So now I have 12.8 ohms on the other one. And 0 0.3 on the other one. All done. I think I know why. Perhaps. Are they? No, they shouldn't be. What the heck's going on here? What the heck is going on here? <clears throat> really strange now okay so now now it's okay I only have continuity and resistance on one of the pins so these are the pins for the for one of the sensors for one of the eaters bank 2 orange now if I change this to the other one this one here I get zero and if I measure that one I get continuity which is fine and what I've done is I've disconnected the other O2 sensor, number two, on the other side. Now, the only thing I can think of, uh, because they share the powers, isn't it? Because they share the power, that's why. That's why, okay. Okay, so they share the power here somehow. Okay, let's gonna do Because they share the power, he has to be. Okay. Okay, at least we have no shorts between any other wires. It's because they share the power. Okay, so. Let me see what we're going to do next. Okay, and I lifted, just before I do another check, I lifted uh, the fuse box. Okay. Uh, looks good so all you need to do to lift this box is pull these tabs out and undo oh, I'm gonna put it back actually and then do these two bolts here and these bolts up and you put it out so I already checked uh, the pink wire which is the one that picks up the voltage to the sensors comes to here no here there we go and is more than good okay as we establish and then from here it goes to those two fuses uh, that's it i guess the reason why i have two fuses is because the other fuse comes back and it's going to feed some other sensors probably the front sensors the sensors one uh yeah without diagrams is a little bit of a guessing game but i think i'm not too far out either way so uh, we're going to put it back i'm going to clean this uh, voltage point here as we're going to put this back in place actually let me pull this out and give you a good brush off here uh, because this is not very good i'm just putting it back so new nut a little bit of uh, again a little bit of dielectric grease where the contact happens underneath there and then as we tie up the these two bolts there's one little thing that i thought it might worth the mention which is when you do it to make sure this is done right you're gonna see that right here on this little thing here there's an orange tab that should start to show up that will means the plug underneath is being pulled up and you have a good connection and you need to do it there it is you see the, the orange tab you need to do it until you make sure this tab is all the way up See that? There we go. I don't know if this is very good in there. Because it's not tied up. Why is it not tying it up? Looks like something is wrong underneath. He pulled it up. Definitely. I think am I gonna this one was definitely tied. This this one pulled it up, but it's not really tying. Well that means the nut is bad. Anyway, let's let let's kind of have a look. This is why you need space change. So when I pull this one, when I tie this one up, an orange tab will come up here as well. OK, 
Okay, and uh, now I'm really confused because I was coming here. Oh, that's hold on, no. Look, sensor two, bunk two is actually now activating the sensor. Look, bunk two, sensor two. Now we have a reading in there, and we have no faults in there at all. So I'm really confused right now as why, so as you can see, sensor bunk one sensor two and bunk two sensor two, they are both pretty much doing the same stuff. So they are activating, and I'm really confused. We still oh no, we are on the closed loop now. Oh. All done. Okay, maybe not. As you can see here now, it says the circuit has passed. Uh, and what I thought was because I was trying to do a test. I'm going to turn the engine off. Uh, I was trying to do a test by connecting by connecting my test light in there. And I thought maybe the ECU is seeing the resistance of that filament. And uh, perhaps it was just a, a wild thought. I disconnected it. It carried on doing the same. I'll turn it off now. And I wanna so let's gonna start this again. Open loop, closed loop. I don't know what to say. I'm sure the sensor didn't fix itself unless, and this is a little bit of a thing, unless that earth point that we fixed on the first video was the same, was where, no, but it can't be. Unless that would fit something around there. Could be, guys, it could be that was an earth point for Maybe not the heater, because the heater obviously is pulsed by the ECU. Um, but it could be that I was feeding something else. Maybe the actually sensor itself. Uh, not 100% sure. Uh, the truth is, it's fixed, guys. We haven't really done nothing. Uh, we've done a lot of testing, make sure we got the things correctly. It, sh it could be that at that point... Uh, is shared let me just come in down here so it's not requesting the the engine light at the moment which is good and uh, I'm gonna leave it here to warm up see if the sensor is not failing as he warms up perhaps but it's definitely working now 100% could be that was that ground who knows but, um, but the next thing we're gonna do uh, is we have one more issue to sort. However, uh, the fuel gauge now is 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 pointing okay. I'm not sure if that's the correct level, but that's going to be for another video, perhaps. Uh, the 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 screens at the bottom are both working now. Could be that that was the ground that was causing all sorts of issues. Uh, hmm, this is interesting. Right, let's the engine warm up and see if these sensors carried on working okay uh, guys so the engine is now at 94 degrees uh, it's now running for a few minutes uh, for about 10 minutes maybe more we'll check quickly here on my live data for the O2 sensors so 13 and 14 minutes running uh, no engine light which means it's still okay so it still shows past and as you can see I still have readings in there and I still have that, which I believe this is the duty cycle. Let me show you on the scope that indeed, so I, the reason why I couldn't see that on my light, I guess, is because maybe it's pulsing too fast and that was not enough to uh, to light the, the thing. But as you can see here on the scope, um, doing the orange and uh, white wire, and as you can see, the ECU is doing its its job. 
So guys, I'm not really sure what happened between the last day we worked on this and today. Uh, because the ground was already fixed at that point. So I'm not 100% sure. Uh, could it be that I would have to leave the O2 to completely cool down before the ECU tries to activate it again? Right, really weird this thing is. Nevertheless, I'm gonna go for a drive. I wanna go for a drive and see exactly what this does, see if any faults comes up. I'm gonna monitor this live data and I wanna see what happens. Uh, I really want to see what happens. And I'm gonna leave the engine to completely cool down maybe until tomorrow morning, restart it again, see what it does uh, before I completely say that this is fixed. Uh, because I, I'm not really 100% sure what happened uh, here. Not really sure. Right guys, and I'm literally here in the middle of nowhere, nearly. Um, right, this thing is driving absolutely perfect. Uh, no problems at all. Uh, it drives really well. No issues, no faults. It sounds amazing. This V8, it really sounds nice. Um, but uh, I put in both banks, sensor 2 uh, for both banks uh, and sensor 2 for both banks and that one in there just to show me that it's active. Uh, guys, it's, it's, it's driving fine. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure exactly uh, what happened here. Um, I, I, again, I'm going to drive back home and see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to leave it to cool down completely until tomorrow morning and uh, I want to see what happens tomorrow morning. Let's put it like that. Um, but surely it won't fix itself. Uh, now, I know for a fact, I don't know if I mentioned this back in the video, I know for a fact that the ground for the sensor itself um, was going from that same uh, point uh, that we fixed on the first video. Uh, link in the description below. Watch that video uh, if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about. So I know the ground for that, uh, for both sensors, um, for both uh, bank two sensor was going from there. Now, could it be that um, the bad ground for the sensor side uh, would make this you to see something wrong with those values and would disable the eater? Uh, is a possibility. I'm not 100% sure of the strategy on this ECU, how it works uh, regards to the O2 sensors. Could it be something that would affect them uh, in that way? Um, but uh, but yeah, it looks like, I, I don't know, obviously when I fixed the sensors, the engine was warmed up, uh, the, the engine was hot, let's say. Uh, I, I, I really don't know, guys. I, I just really don't know. If you know anything, just please leave in the comments below because I don't think I'm going to find anything wrong anymore with this. I'm quite confident that it's fixed, but I think only time will tell. Uh, I will give you another try again. I'm repeating myself. I'll give another try tomorrow when the engine is cold and I'll see what happens. But so far, it looks like it's good. It's driving fine and I can't fault anything. Um, same goes for these two screens. Uh, I forgot to tell you, I've turned the engine off about three times already and I let the latch completely, so I've left everything to completely go off. Start it up, those screens come on straight away and the fuel level goes right straight to there uh, as soon as I turn it on. I'm going to drive a little bit more just to make sure because it looks to me like this tank is full uh, because I can start to see the needle moving a little bit. Uh, I might be wrong, I hope not, but it looks like so. Anyway. So it might not gonna be a video for the fuel gauge, probably, who knows. Um, but yeah, wait, and uh, I'll be back on the next clip with some sort of closure or whatever. Okay, and I just got back home and I start and stopped the engine another couple times uh, for the last half an hour. Um, after the last clip, I drove for another half an hour and I stopped the engine a few times. And one thing that you are my pleased to know that I didn't notice, don't know if that was doing it when I started last time, is the following. Really strange. Look right there. We have an engine light. <laughs> we have an engine light. The fuel gauge is definitely working. And the reason why I know it is working is because when I left home, the needle was literally 
was literally on top of the mark of the full mark so the needle was literally on top of this white line and now it started to move so the tank is is, is full uh, and we have an engine light um, guys could it be something a poor contact on that box uh, on the fuse box as we messed with things as we tied everything properly etc etc could it be that uh, could it be that voltage in there that was messing things up could it be the ground could it be a, a, a combination of all these issues um, right it's not a very good video guys I know it looks like things just are fixed by miracle <laughs> if you wish if you will uh, but uh, but yeah I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this is fixed guys um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna probably just leave the car here now today let it cool down until tomorrow morning as I said start it up again and then if it's everything okay the way it is I'm gonna give it I'm gonna dim this as fixed because there's nothing else really I can do uh, because it's working if it's working it's working no it's not the following day yet just before we pack up for today um i just did a full scan to the car and i, I just thought we would might worth to mention that uh, i was getting this was just now i don't think there is a time on the report there is not sure don't think it is anyway i just did this now and as you're gonna see obviously this is the the afterward afterwards if you wish uh, but look how many codes I had a lot of stuff for communications with the body control module look at that a lot of communication faults okay uh, they could be causing all sort of uh, all sorts of issues as well uh, again could have been this from when the battery is disconnected could have this been Again, those ground points at the front. I'm not sure what else they feed, uh, guys. I know, I know. Oh, there is actually a date and time in there. This was just now, as you can see. Okay. Um. Again. Um. Yeah. Let's wait to see how this behaves. morning everybody right following day so that's gonna go for another test now before I start this thing uh, let me just tell you that yesterday I have uh, the last clip you've just seen uh, that was yesterday Saturday that was about I don't know 11 o'clock half 11 and then I left the car off until about six o'clock actually half six and at half six, I went for another 20 minute drive. Drove fine, started fine, no warnings, no nothing. I don't have the Maxis with me, um, but the, that doesn't really matter. Um, the guy is not throwing any faults. So we are just going to uh, start this thing. And then today I do have this support. So I'm gonna take you with me for a drive and uh, we're just gonna make sure it drives okay with no issues. Um, in the meantime guys i would like to also uh, say something which i put right at the start of the video when i mentioned uh, i didn't have diagrams silly 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 me i actually had diagrams and global on uh, global tees um, i did have all the diagrams in there so this morning just this morning before i came out uh, to record this clip i actually loaded <coughs> i turned on the laptop um for the voxel and uh, loaded global tees and I've checked the diagrams and the I'm gonna put the picture here so this was the ground point uh, we fixed on the previous video and as you can see that feeds loads of different things as you can probably see um, so I'm not gonna say that all those grounds were bad because if they were we would have way more issues with the car uh, because some of those grounds they are go to vital components um but my main thing is that in the load um when consume when when power has been drawn by the by that ground through that ground it could be that that was not enough and modules would start to do all sorts of um uh, so that's that's what it is so now let's gonna start this thing actually oh let's see what happens okay
I didn't even notice the, the engine light came on. Let's do it again. Yes, he did. Okay. Right, let's gonna let it to just warm up a tiny bit. As you can see, the fuel gauge is working absolutely perfect. The needle is now pointing to that clear point in the middle of the two bars. So it's definitely working. The screens are coming on every single time. Engine light is working. We have no warnings. Blah, 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 blah. So let's gonna just let it warm up a little bit and I'm gonna take it for a drive and hopefully wrap up this video. Okay, so. gonna go slowly while the engine warms up a little bit so yeah really silly me I didn't thought yesterday about the global T's for diagrams uh, it would have helped a little bit uh, not massively as you probably have seen throughout this video but it would have helped a tiny bit The weather is really bad. I mean, it's the same as yesterday. It's been like this, really dull, really foggy, no sun, they're really bad. Right, so let's go to fast forward a little bit and see what happens. Okay guys, and drove absolutely perfect, no problems at all. So I'm going to wrap up this video here now and dimmed this as repaired. So, um, yeah, there's no concerns. Uh, the car is driving fine. And uh, yeah, that's, that's literally about it. There's nothing else to say. Um, so again, and just repeat myself, uh, I strongly believe now that uh, it was that two things we fixed, one on the previous video, uh, one on this video, that Maya fixed the problem. It looks like he did. Uh, I drove now again for about half an hour, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna just carry on driving for the sake of it. Everything is working, everything's fine, there's no faults. So that's it for this video guys. So what else to say? With no further ado, I still hope you enjoyed the video, even though it's nothing special. Um, I do still hope that there's some information here still that might be useful. Um, maybe you learn something, who knows. Uh, if you do still have any questions, any comments, guys, you know exactly how it works. Just put them below. And like always, thanks for watching. Ah, wrong side again.